Hello and welcome to the very first ever episode 13 of the Crossplay Podcast. My name is Nikki James, sitting here alongside the homie Zach. Hello. And we got a lot on the docket today, a lot to talk about, but first, a small amount of side talk. Zach, how you been feeling, bro? Been feeling good. I like that you just tipped your hat to me. I was did, that what yeah. that was? It's a sign of respect. Thank you. I like that. I like that. Uh, what have you been playing? Anything um, of note? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Cup Boy and Mugman. <laughs> Cup Boy. <laughs> <laughs> the classic uh, Xbox game, Cup Boy. We're going to get into uh, Cuphead in a bit. Uh, but yeah, I've been playing some Cuphead. What else? Um, I guess that's for the most part it. I've been pl- we've been playing that. Like me and you went on a pretty good run last night. Yeah, we uh, we've been playing some Fortnite. Oh, also. Fortnite is fucking amazing. Yeah, we <laughs> we. I definitely. love that game, and I went in with the worst fucking expectations. I was like, this is some cheesy, bullshit, fifth grader fucking games. Yeah, it, I thought that too. I thought it was going to be kind of like a shitty ripoff of um, PUBG. And then even though I haven't played PUBG, admittedly, it's um, really fun. Really yeah. so much fun. And the building aspect adds a lot to it. But we'll get into that in oh, better yeah. detail. Sniper Towers. <laughs> Sniper Wolf Towers. <clears throat> Sniper Wolf, shout out. <laughs> Sup, baby? So do you, do you actually... <laughs> You said you actually watched her the other day. Um, I did. I watched a couple videos. How was it? Would you it Would you call right. yourself a fan? Um, I didn't subscribe to her channel, but you know, it's it's uh good content. I haven't watched her gaming, so I can't say that. I can't. I can't really have a fair assessment. Well, uh, for me, I've been uh, editing some Sonic Mania Let's Plays that are pretty damn funny. Those will be out. Uh, the first week of October, so keep a lookout for those. If you like what you're hearing, you can follow us over on Twitter at Crossplay Pod, and you can also read the blog over at wordpress.com slash crossplay entertainment. You can also support us over on Patreon at patreon.com slash crossplay entertainment. Let's get right into the news. Diving in head first. Biggest news of the week, probably. Red Dead 2 has dropped a new trailer on us the other day. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, did you see it? What did you think about it? Let's give me your uh, your impressions. Let's talk about it. I saw it, and um, I'm really excited for it. the The story it seems to be a completely different story. Uh, same universe, but it's not a necessarily a prequel. Definitely not a sequel. So that that's kind of exciting to me because I don't want them to ruin the character, right? Of uh, of John. They could they they could have destroyed John Marston had they used him again. And I think the uh, the assumption was that it was going to be another John Marston story, and it wasn't, uh, which is good. Which yeah, I think is pleasant really good. surprise. Uh, so, uh, what other impressions do you have of the trailer? Just what, what you saw. Um, it looks to be have a really heavy story, which I think is is great. The main character, also uh, kind of like John Marston, isn't isn't one hundred percent good. He's a bit of an antihero. Yeah, definitely. Uh, with that one, what did he tell that the kid? That yeah, his mom was sitting in the background crying. She's wearing a black dress, and he's like, "And maybe when your mother's done mourning, I'll keep her in black on your behalf." <laughs> <laughs> so that is such a good threat. It's very threatening. But um, um, he and he seems like a very uh, surly but like authoritative character. Like in the very beginning of the trailer, when he kicks the guy who's sleeping by his campfire, and he's like, "You got my money." I seen your name on our ledger. <laughs> like it's just really cool, but like I'll fuck you up. Yeah, no country like a for old men. Cut to the chase. Yeah, yeah, really, really cool. So what we learn from it is uh, we see Dutch Vanderland, who from Red Dead One, he is the kind of the the guy that trained John Marston to be a uh, a bandit, uh, and it kind of adds to the story of John Marston. I think you come across a young John in this game. Uh, and I think he is forced into the bandit life. I think Dutch kills his um, father. Kills his, Marston's father? Yeah, Marston's father, and his and his mother's already dead. Uh, so that kind of forces him into the life with Dutch Vanderland. Uh, and I think a young John Marston uh, is kind of tortured by the main character, Arthur Morgan, from Red Dead 2. And I kind of have a lot of money riding on the... Uh, the bet that John Marston kills you at the end of Red Dead Two, um, I think that might be the story. There, I'm not basing that on anything; just my 
my two cents. Yeah, so just we wishful hope. Yeah, Hopefully wishful thinking. Yeah, so we see Dutch Vanderland, um, a younger, more uh, mentally put together Dutch. If you remember, spoilers, if you haven't played the original Red Dead, what the fuck are you doing? Go play it. Um, <laughs> at the end of Red Dead, uh, when you corner Dutch, uh, chase him down with the U.S. Army, uh, he runs up a mountain, you chase him up the mountain, you eventually corner him at the edge of a cliff, and he gives this really cool monologue about how times are changing and they're leaving them behind, people like him, and... Uh, he's like, you can't change who you are. You can't change nature. You can't fight progress. And instead of being captured by the army, he just jumps off the cliff and dies. Um, so that's how Dutch ends. So it's cool to see him in the trailer. We're obviously going to see some ties. Um, really impressive trailer. I, I liked it a lot. Of course, I'm going to pre-order the game. Of course, it's going to be a day one play. Might even be a uh, take the day off work kind of game. Who knows? Yeah. Do you think uh, the kid that he tells that uh, this uh, Mr. Morgan... The kid that he tells, I'm going to keep her in black on your behalf. That's John. Do you think? Yeah. I think it's John, for sure. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, I think. Because he wasn't he wasn't a kid kid. He looked like, you know, teenager. Yeah. No, uh, people have uh, speculated that already. And the, the math works out in terms of that kid's age and how old John would have been at that time. Uh, the math does work out. So that would be an amazing yeah, uh, obviously there's a relationship. If they're if they're putting that in the story, there's going to be some sort of relationship between this Morgan guy and Marston or that kid. Yeah, and and another thing about uh, this Red Dead Two situation that's interesting is months ago a redditor named Red Dead Insider leaked a lot of information about the game in the typical Reddit, you know, skeptical fashion. They downvoted him to hell. Um, fucking Reddit and crucified him. <laughs> Turns out a lot of the shit he said though is dead on. He guessed the lead character's name, Arthur. He guessed that you're gonna be the game is based on moving from settlement to settlement because you're on the run. Um, so he get, he guessed a lot of stuff. So if what he says is correct, there's gonna be a party like system that you kind of saw in like games like Mass Effect, where you go out with the people from your gang. It looks like you got Dutch, you got a Native American character, and a couple others from the gang, and you can choose who to go out with. So it's kind of a cool party system that's um, that'll be interesting, and it makes sense because of what Rockstar did in Grand Theft Auto V, where in their single player story you could switch between um, what's the, I'm forgetting all their names all of a sudden you could switch between all the three of the lead characters on the fly. So it's a little bit of a deviation from that in that you got a party system now, but it, it would make sense. That would be a natural evolution of that system for for Rockstar. Yeah. Uh, moving on down the list here. Halo 3 celebrated its 10-year anniversary this week on the 25th. If you don't feel old, you might feel a little <laughs> older now. Um, are you much of a Halo-man? Um, I, like, I loved the first two. Uh, Halo 3 is kind of where it lost me. That's where you fell off? Yeah, it's kind of like when Call of Duty went Modern Warfare. It, was, it just was like you guys added too much, and yeah. it's just it's not the same game. What are your, do you have any interesting or notable Halo 1 memories? Um, just dominating, just, uh, you know, head, <laughs> <laughs> just head, dominating, just dominating people, headshots with the pistol. The pistol was the best game, the best gun in the game, yeah. in, in my opinion, yeah. aside from maybe the rocket launcher, the noob tube. Yeah. I have a lot of fond memories of staying up late <laughs> at, uh, our friends, the Pro Mutters houses, uh, playing oh, yeah. Halo. Uh, four player local late into the night. Me, you, David, and Josh. And Josh, yeah. do you do you have any memories from that? Um, yeah, Josh just being very aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> he was a sore loser. So check this out. So check this out. One night we were playing on. So let me wait. Let me set the scene. We're in their garage. The garage is of like anybody's garage, packed full of shit to the brim. But they have a few couches set up and a TV, and it's late at night. We're playing Halo. We're playing on Hang 'em High, four player deathmatch. And I continually, well, hold on. Let me finish setting up the scene. So I'm sitting directly in front of the TV. Now, Josh is behind me and to my right, sitting on the couch. So he's right behind me. So we're playing on Hang 'em High. As the match is going on, I continually 
melee Josh from behind. Now, if you know anything <laughs> about Halo, you know if you melee somebody from behind, it's instant kill. Insta kill. It's the best way of killing someone. It's the most dominant. Yeah, way. and I wasn't doing anything underhanded, anything shitty, or anything. I was just Josh wasn't paying attention to his surroundings, and I kept running up behind him and just getting him, dude. Exposing him. Yep, exposing him, and he got. He was getting so pissed. He's a very competitive guy. There was at least at the time, and. Still is. Oh, still is. Still is kicking ass in jujitsu and everything. Yeah, I wouldn't fight him. <laughs> so he's sitting behind me and he goes, if you do that again, I'm going to burn you with my cigarette that he was smoking. <laughs> his camel wide. And I was like, okay. And I just laughed at him. Sure enough, <laughs> give it give it a minute. And I come up behind him again. He's trying to snipe on a ledge. And I come up behind him and I hit him. And this motherfucker puts his cigarette in the, the tender part in the back of your arm, like right above your elbow. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, where you don't want to get pinched ever. Yeah, dude. And where grandma it, used to pinch you. That was him letting uh letting out a lot of his loser aggression on me. I the thing I the what I think really happened it, with Josh why he did that is he made the threat thinking that you wouldn't do it again. And I saying I'll burn you with my cigarette if you do it again. So he had to. But then you did it, and so, yeah, you forced him to hold true to his word, and <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure he regretfully did it. Victim but blaming. I'm not, I'm not blaming you at all. Victim. I'm not. I'm just saying that's probably why he did that. No, it wasn't that was, to hurt that you. That probably was his mentality, that fucker. <laughs> Speaking of exciting times, we've got some exciting October releases for video games. Everybody knows that... The October is the start of fuck my wallet times from here till the end of the year. The reason being is that everyone wants to avoid the Call of Duty. Uh, you don't want to come out around Call of Duty because your game's not going to sell. Call of Duty yearly comes out early November. So in order to get out for the holiday season, your your WWEs and your games that come out, your FIFAs will come out in October so they can get out and still have product out for the holiday season, but still avoid Call of Duty. So that's what we're seeing right now. October is very exciting. By the time this airs, it'll be, I think, the third or fourth. So we'll be right into it. Let's go over some exciting October releases. Zach, are there any some off the top of your head? Some ones. Off the top of your head you want to go over, and then we'll, we'll check the list. Um, really excited for the new WWE. Yes. That's, yep. Game of the month for me. Yeah. Uh, what do you got to say? Well, the uh, the customization that they're allowing for it is going to take it to the next level. I mean, me and you have played games on here. Where we're where we're just like frustrated with not being able to do what we wanted to do, yeah. like um, a lot of like an el- elimination f- a fatal four way. Yep. They don't have that. That ruins Hell in a Cell if you want to do it with lots of if lots of people in there because mm-hmm. you can't go out on on top of the cage. And, and they everything. finally added something you that was basic that was on the Nintendo sixty four, which is a match editor where you can add stipulations like elimination or first blood or whatever. You can add those to any. Oh, first blood? Yeah. I didn't do do they have that in nope. the new one? Yep. Oh, I can't you wait. Can oh, that's that, going to be awesome. And you can add that to any match style. So you could do fuck, I'm so stoked. You could do an 8 man Hell in a Cell first blood elimination. Oh. So Dude, everyone has to get fucked up. So in first blood, there's no pinfall, right? No, no, no. you got to believe to, to be <laughs> oh, eliminated. Dude, that is going to be a savage fucking match. Yeah, we have to do that. Should be the first match we do. Yeah, I'm, I'm incredibly excited for WWE for all the reasons you just stated. It looks uh, quite a bit better than it did before. It looks quite a bit better than it did before. It, it seems like an incremental upgrade rather than like, uh, you know, something that's just, uh, you know, like an overhaul, like a major upgrade. It's incremental, which is fine. They're doing a good job. They overhauled the skin physics. They overhauled the lighting system. Um, the I'm, lighting, I'm actually really excited for because the the glowing that they have. That's going to be so awesome when you're customizing characters. Like, we yeah, can, they, they added the glow effect for I think Naomi's entrance. They had to add this these all these crazy and effects. Zach or not Zach Ryder, uh, who's the glorious dude, Bobby Roode. Oh, Bobby Roode, yeah, his entrance looks great. Uh, so yeah, uh, WWE 2K18. Um, that's a day one purchase for me. That's a take the day off work purchase for me. Um, I'm going to be probably. I'm definitely doing Let's Plays that day. Uh, We may or may not be streaming it. Uh, We're trying to get that set up, so keep an eye out for that. You can always pay attention to our Twitter over at CrossplayPod to keep up with all the latest. Any other October releases you're really looking forward to? Um, Sonic Forces. (sighs) That's November. (laughs) 
Oh, is that November? It's early, like November, first week in November. But uh, oh, that's competing with Call of Duty. Yeah. So oh, Call of Duty is not going to sell <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, Sonic Forces looks like hot ass. <laughs> I'll be honest. Like with hot you. ass, like as in, damn, like, that's a hot ass right there. No, no, no. I, that was poor word choice on my part. <laughs> it looks like, like hot ass garbage. Like hot ass garbage. Bullshit. Anytime they try to add a story to Sonic and especially when they give him a voice and they do this RP these RPG elements it's terrible it is terrible it You're has gonna- been but um i mean they don't have the track record for it i'll admit that the, every game aside from the original ones on Sega they they've all sucked except mania except mania which is a redo of the old Sega ones yeah so <clears throat> i get that but i think sonic mania has sort of propelled the whole sonic uh, universe and the whole character of Sonic, I think it's really generated a lot of interest in them. And I, I don't know, for me, it like I want to see what they do with it. I want to see what kind of character they build with Sonic. You know what? As long as it it plays okay and it's not as much of a hot mess as like Sonic. Um, I don't even remember the the, the most recent Sonic Unleashed. games. Unleashed, yes, is a good example. All those when Sonic 06, all those were really just they they didn't run well. So I can put up with a shitty story. And cheesy gameplay if it plays well, but it's not gonna play well. <laughs> it just simply it looked well from the gameplay I've seen in the trailer. It looks like there's a lot of just uh, running, but it's from a third person view behind them yeah. as opposed to side scrolling. So that looks like it looks challenging, but it looks like it'll be fun too. It looks like almost like a racing game. So going down the list, here, I'm gonna name some of the interesting releases. You got your. Forza Motorsport Seven, you a Forzaman? <laughs> you like Forza? Um, no, it's uh, it's kind of like a less interesting version of GT, in my opinion. You're Gran a Gran Turismo. Turismo man. I like Grant. I love Gran Turismo. Really? Yeah. I've never been a Gran Turismo. It's too simulation for me. It's too. That, that's what I love about it. Really? Is it's like yeah, you build your own car, and uh, that was like one of the first games I had on PlayStation. I think the original PlayStation. Yep. And, was a PlayStation um, game. Man, it just it's so much fun and you can build whatever car you want, like whatever color. I remember I made an all gold car cuz <laughs> I was like, I don't know, 7 or That's 8. That's as creative it was as you just can like get. super yeah. cool like, yeah. ooh, it's all gold and futuristic. Yeah, so it just, you know, there's a lot of nostalgia there too, but just the idea of customizing something to exactly the way you want it is just it's a lot of fun. Yeah, right. So we got I'm going to name some of the interesting ones and whether or not I'm a fan like Dragon's Dogma. Dark Arisen. I'm not a Dragon's Dogma guy, but I know a lot of people are looking forward to it. Peps. Good old Peps is looking forward to that. Uh, Layton's Mystery Journey. Um, I've never played a Professor Layton game. Uh, have you? Do you know anything about him? Uh, does he have... Is that the one with the puzzle box? Yeah, they're all uh, puzzle-y I type. Have, I have one of those games, I've, and oh, I hated it. Oh, really? Yeah. It's not that fun. It's is it's it okay, not? but... It's, I always thought I would like it, but I've never played it, and they've come I'll out I'll let like, you try it. I have a... I have a... Um, uh, I don't have a 3DS. What do I have? A DS. I have a DS, and I have the old Professor Layton's like, mystery right. box. Well, so. shit. There you go. Yeah. Um, it's mystery box of uh, puzzle games or something like that. All right, well, I'm going to play it. All so right. moving on down <laughs> the list, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions. I'm a big fan oh, of that yeah. Superstar Saga series. It's uh, a really – anytime Mario does RPG type stuff, it's really awesome. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, the constantly laden with controversy Middle Earth Shadow of War will be coming out November 10th. Um, be sure to get the $5 DLC. Yep, all the money will go to – 100% the, of it. The developer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there's been controversy with that game with the developer that passed away. They came out with a DLC in his honor, pay five bucks. Money was supposed to go to the family. That uh, alone uh, raised some eyebrows, and then it turned out that maybe all the money wasn't going to the families. So that put uh, developers in a lot of hot water. Um, and then after that, there's the loot box controversy. Uh, where they're they're structuring their economy to where if you really want to get good stuff, you got to pay real money. So yeah. that's the problem with that game. Moving on down the list, October 13th, The Evil Within 2, releasing on Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. We just watched the trailer for that before recording. What do you think? It looks terrifying. It, it looks so fucking creepy. 
and like the whole even the end when he's like getting dragged down into that white like thick milky substance yeah well, that doesn't sound right but <laughs> that, that viscous <laughs> thick seminal <laughs> Um, but yeah, it just looks so like creepy. It just, I don't know. It looks like it'll give me nightmares. It looks fantastic. Uh, one time I tried playing the evil within got about 10 minutes into it and was like, F this, but maybe I need to give it another chance. I'm, I'm, I have a really short attention span. If a game doesn't get me right away, I bail. So maybe I need to give it another shot. Did you play it? No. So let's, let's do that. Let's do a Let's play. We should do it together. We, we have a lot of fun playing, uh, horror games together. We did resident evil seven. We kind of or... we, we gain courage from each other. Yeah, we definitely. I wouldn't. Hell no, I wouldn't have played Resident Evil Seven alone. I'm a I'm a big old puss when it comes to scary games. No, nope. I have my Bible next to me. I'll play it in the daylight. We got Gran Watch Turismo after Gran Turismo Sport coming out for the PlayStation Four. You're a Gran Turismo, right? Oh yeah. So I've actually never played that game. Have you seen any of the trailers or anything for this one yet? I haven't actually. All right, maybe we uh, we should, and we'll talk about it a little more next week. Yeah, South Park: The Fractured But Whole, such a great name, being released October seventeenth. <laughs> also, for the Windows, <laughs> PS4, and Xbox One. How are they so funny? Slash punny, <laughs> dude. I'm so into this. I already <laughs> fractured but whole. I've already pre-ordered this game. Um, I recently replayed and beat. Uh, South Park, The Stick of Truth, amazing game, like 9 out of 10, maybe even 10 out of 10. It's such a good game. Um, I'm, I can't overstate how, how much I'm looking forward to that. However, not looking forward to it as much as dropping something on the table. WWE 2K18 also being released to Nintendo Switch. Really? PS4, Xbox One, and Windows, October 17th. Was the last one on Windows, too? Uh, Yeah, they're usually on Windows, but Windows, as usual, because the Mustard Race, is like the red-headed stepchild of a lot of these developers. So they're like, yeah, we're going to come out with the Windows version when we get around to it. Don't worry about it. We'll do it when we do it. And yeah. then the version comes out. It's not optimized. It's got a lot of problems. It's got a lot of glitches. And they don't even address it because they're like, hey, money's over on consoles. So we're gonna look at we're gonna put our resources over that over there fixing that stuff you know, yeah. So yeah, but the Switch that's a huge uh, return. I don't think WWE has had a game out uh, for Nintendo console since WWE 12. So it's cool if you have a yeah. Nintendo Switch, you can play WWE on the road now. So that is so Whoa, fucking cool. That is cool. Makes a Switch a must-have for me. Um, there's a few limitations. You would figure it's a Nintendo console. You're not going to get the PS4 version. Um, it, they don't get the eight-man matches. They are limited to six-man. Um, there are a few others in terms of like uh, graphical limitations and stuff, but the biggest one is they don't get eight-man. Uh, so, yeah, WWE 2K18, must-buy, day one purchase. October 19th, just a couple days later, Age of Empires, the definitive edition, is being released for Windows 10. Fuck man, Hell this is a crazy. Yeah. We're only on we're only halfway through the month and it's already shaping up to be amazing. There's so many games. Now, now the Age of Empires is just sort of a redone original Age of Empires. Yeah, it's a remastered Age of Empires with all new pathfinding, all new graphics engine, all new animations for like buildings being destroyed. Um it's just completely redone and it looks amazing. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um how I much is that going to be do you do you reckon? I don't know. I don't know for a fact. I would. I would hope it's no more than forty. Yeah. I, same here. How much would you pay for a game like that? Thirty. Thirty. Forties even a little. Forties. Yeah, maybe a little steep. A bridge too far, so to speak. Yeah, I'd wait till it goes on sale. October twentieth, we got Fire Emblem Warriors for Fire Emblem fans. This is a big deal. Not so much for me. Uh, Peps likes that one, doesn't he? Uh yeah, he's a big Fire Emblem fan. He's he's our resident Nintendo guy. Uh October 24th Destiny 2 being released for Windows finally. <laughs> losers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> losers. Mustard race. You suck with your stupid drivers and <laughs> <laughs> all your drivers issues. Yeah, drive this. October 27th Assassin's Creed Oranges <laughs> comes out for Windows, PS4 and Xbox One. Could not care less. Assassin's Creed needs to go away for a few more years. 
Super Mario Odyssey also being released the 27th. R.I.P. Assassin's Creed. Um, also, Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus being released the 27th. Jeez, that is a jam oh, That's going to be a great game. The oh, new yeah. Wolfenstein? Yeah, looking the forward to it. The E3 trailer blew me away. Yeah, where it shows it's like 1950s America, but it's all Nazis like in a milkshake bar. Like yeah. getting milkshakes and stuff. It's a really cool alternate history. I love historical stuff like that like fallout 3 did it too uh, yep uh so that's pretty much it in terms of uh interesting october releases so that was seemed like more than 10 games we just named that, yeah it seemed like a, a lot of games so for us let's players that's good news because uh it's gonna be no shortage <laughs> of, of things to play uh so really excited really looking forward to that moving on down the list here uh, we're going to go over this really quick. Blade Runner 2049 seems to be going against expectations and is kicking ass right now. Sitting at a 90, what was it, 6? 96. On Rotten Tomatoes as of this morning, uh, Saturday or Sunday morning. Uh, what do you know about Blade Runner? Did you see the original? Did you? I haven't seen the original. Me either. Me either. It's a huge uh, gap in my movie knowledge. But, you know, it's it's not really our generation's movie. No, like it's a not. lot of the older people at my work, when I told them I hadn't seen it, they were fucking astonished. Like as if I, I committed a crime, they couldn't believe it. Really? But I, and so I would ask the younger people that go into the bar, and I'm like, "Hey, have you ever seen Blade One, Blade Runner?" And like ninety percent of them are like, "Nah, no, nah, I never saw it." Yeah, no, it's yeah, you're right. It's not really of our generation. I wonder if you need to have seen the first one to really uh, fully get this one. I don't know, but I'm I'm gonna watch it anyway. I feel like if if people are gonna act like I'm missing out on you know the best movie ever, then I'll give it a chance. Yeah, I'll give it you know an hour of my life to impress me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I hope that there's not a lot of fan service in the in this new one though, where it where they make unnecessary references to little facts in the original movie. Oh God, so many like nudge, eh? yeah, replicants, huh? Where all the everyone who knows it is gonna laugh extra boisterously, and you're just gonna be looking around like <laughs> confused. Yeah, it's really cool to see Harrison Ford still putting in the bangers, you know, yeah. that aren't Star Wars. And I know this isn't a new yeah. IP or anything, but it's still cool to see Harrison this is Ford. First big movie since Bruno, right? Was he in Bruno? He had a very good. Very great interview with Bruno. We need to watch that again. <laughs> we watched it like a year ago, I think, together. But it's I forgot. No, it. it's it's a very very small part. It's it's like he Bruno goes up to interview him, and he's like, Harrison Ford, tell me about your latest movie. And he goes, <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> and he just keeps walking. <laughs> oh, Harrison Ford, never change and stop flying airplanes, please. You keep crashing them. How many has he crashed? He's been in like two or three accidents in the last two or three years. How do they let him fly? He's dude. Indiana he's a fucking, fucking Jones. That's a hazard, though. Like if the, if that was a car, they, he'd have his license well, taken away. As someone who works in an airport, if a guy his age walked in with that mean mean mug on his face with a bull whip and was like, "I'm taking the Baron outside, <laughs> the I'm taking the plane out there," I'd let him. I'm not gonna get hit by that bull whip. <laughs> I'm gonna go land on the golf course. <laughs> and she takes off. Where's my family? So the SNES Classic uh, launched this week, and surprise, surprise, the launch seems to be going okay. Jason Schreier over at Kotaku.com writes, One might expect after the great SNES Classic pre-order debacle of 2017 that launch day would be a disaster, but it actually seems to have gone pretty well. You might not be able to just stroll into a store and snag one of the slick limited edition retro consoles, but it seems like people who put in a bit of extra time this morning were able to get them without much problem. In June, when Nintendo announced the Super Nintendo Classic, the company promised that it would manufacture more consoles than it did for last year's NES Classic. Nintendo later announced that the SNES Classic, an $80 box that comes with 21 SNES games, wouldn't just be limited to this year. Recognizing how massively popular the sleek console had become, the company said it would ship more SNES classics through 2018. The console goes on, but the point of the story is that, you know, surprise, something went smoothly for once at launch. Launches almost never really go well. After the um, intentional limited supply of the NES classic, everyone expected this to be a nightmare. 
and a disaster. Uh, do you want an SNES Classic? Are you? Uh, yeah, and I will be buying one. Did you play? Uh, no. Super Nintendo. Yeah, very much. I never had one, but I played one as much as you know. Pretty much every friend I had yeah, had one right. at their house. Exactly. Everyone, so. everyone had that and Turtles in Time. Did you play that? Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time? I did play the Ninja Turtles game. Was that on the Super Nintendo? Yeah. The one that's top view when you... Uh, no, it's a side-scrolling beat-em-up. I didn't play that one then. That's going to be next for our Let's Plays then, since we're going to start oh, doing... Oh, do they play... Do they have that in arcades, though? It was. It was an arcade game. I it played was ported, it in arcades before. Yeah, it was ported to home consoles, and it was a little downgraded, but you could like throw enemies into the screen, and they'd hit the glass and like, crack yeah, the glass. Yeah, I remember that. Um, really rad. What was the top-down Ninja Turtles game? You might be it thinking was, of the one on the NES. Is it maybe, really, really old like that? I think that? so, yeah. And it That's, might be on the NES. They had one, the original on the NES was really bad. That's the one I, I'm more familiar with, actually. Really? I remember that game. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. So, moving on down the list, Cuphead. Oh, yeah. Cup Boy. Cup Boy is out. <laughs> Let's give our uh, uh, impression. Zach and I played it for probably a couple hours. I played it in a, for about an hour last night also. Um, give me your impressions. Give me your uh, thoughts. Um, not the easiest game in the world to play. Actually, extremely fucking difficult. And they only have a normal difficulty, which, thank God, if they had hard, could you fucking imagine that? I bet you they'll release an extra like difficulty at some point. It yeah, seems probably, like you probably have it. to beat it on normal or something like that. Oh, I did. Uh, keep telling me your impressions. I did hear that there's a third way to like a third version of that game that's hidden in the game. Yeah, it's it. It was super fun, and there's a lot of uh, memorizations. You got to just memor uh, memorize what the boss is gonna do. So you have to just, know the patterns. which is awesome. It's like a classic Nintendo game. You just yeah. gotta learn their and learn their tells. Like when they blink, that means they're about to throw something or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, very very classic, um, but super fun. And as difficult as it was, you know, it it makes you just want to replay the level and beat it. It doesn't make you want to, you know, hang up your controller and go cry. Yeah, and the fact that the load times between tries are only like two seconds really makes it easy to keep playing. Yeah. Um, the uh, who was that one boss? It was the blue ball. It's like one of the first bosses. Jose and I beat that last night. Finally, how fucking long did that take? Uh, maybe about a half hour. Damn. See, that's where I left off on the game, and it was just it. It. It's not even that it was that hard. It was just so. I don't know what. I don't know what it was. It's just like you. Know. You I... had to be in the right perfect spot. Like you know, you I had, had a... to duck and attack. Yeah, I have a theory about like platformers and old school games like that, that where at a certain point you start to fall off in terms of how good you are at it because you just you get worn out. Your brain gets worn out from playing and paying so much attention. So I think the key was just we needed to stop for a while and come uh, back later because when me and Jose played it, it wasn't that hard. Yeah, I think you're right. Because we had already been playing for at least an hour by the time we got there. I, I I would do things that I knew would get me killed repeatedly just out of just like frustration, just out of like routine, just like, oh, here I go, I'm going to die. Yeah, I don't <laughs> care. Well, I just run into a guy and get hit and just not yeah. give a shit. <laughs> I, I did that so many times. Me too. Me too. Exactly. So, um, yeah. so if you had to rate that game out of 10, what's your official crossplay? This is going to go in the angles um, of time. I would give it maybe six and a half, seven. Nice. Out of ten. Seven being average. Seven right? being average, yeah. Or, uh, I um, guess well as as a game, yeah. the the artistic style is ten out of ten. Mm -hmm. It is so it's a beautiful and creative way of doing a game. There's I don't know why more people haven't done this by now. Yeah, exactly. Have an old cartoony look to it. Or it's even just like a current cartoony look. Like it's it's really Really fucking cool. It's and, an amazing um, art style. So you say six point five or six point five? Uh, yeah, I'd give it. I'd give it a seven because of how good the art is. Mm, that I, I'd, I yeah. would play it, but um, I don't see it. Um, you know, I don't see it being a game that I play and have to beat. You know, it's not one of those games mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, I kind of echo a lot of how you feel about it. It's really uh, fun. It's really hard. Really pretty, colorful. The animation style is so fun to look at. Um, the story is a little weak uh, in terms yeah. of just giving us paragraphs with pictures uh, for a game that we've been waiting for like three years on. <laughs> I expected a little more, maybe some cutscenes, uh, but it's really fun, really addictive. It's got that classic one more try mentality that keeps you playing for hours and hours and hours. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'd probably give it a 8 out of 10. Um, if not for, I can see there being a limited appeal in terms of um, just getting bored of it at some point. Uh, but I, I really enjoy it when I play it. I just think it's, uh, I don't know how it's longevity. You know, I'm worried about whether I'm going to want to play it again in a year. Right. You know, so 8 out of 10, both very good scores. Cuphead, $20 on exclusively on Xbox. Finally, Xbox got an exclusive. Jiminy Jillikers. That's an Xbox exclusive? I didn't yeah. realize that. For Yeah, and I don't think there's plans for it to come to PS4. Okay, I changed my score to 5 out of 10. Yep. <laughs> Should have came to the PS4. That's where that's where the fucking people are. <clears throat> Five out of ten. I give it a two out of ten. <laughs> Cuphead sucks. Don't buy it. <laughs> Moving on down the list. The Wii Shop channel is finally biting the dust. R.I.P. Wii Shop channel. 2019 will be the last time you will see it running. Ran from 2006 to January 31st, 2019. Do you remember do you have any memories with Wii? The shop yeah. did you ever play? I used to have a Wii. Yeah. Um I liked it. Um what games that, there are a lot of old school games you could buy in it. Um I'm trying to remember some of them that I got. So many. I got Zelda Ocarina of Time. I got Super Mario 3. I got any I of got them. I think I got Super Mario 3 on that cuz I I remember beating that game recently. Yeah. Um so the service is so archaic now if you go back and try to try to use it it uses things like third party points like microsoft used to do microsoft points instead yeah. of just money yeah uh playstation you know the only one to, to that accepted money from the get-go typical sony yep love you love you sony there you go big dog <laughs> so given a little bit of credit tamur hussein over at GameSpot writes it's been a it's with a heavy heart that we have to tell you that the Wii shop channel will be shutting down on january 31st 2019 users will no longer be able to add Wii points to their account starting on march 26th 2018 thankfully it will still be possible to re-download purchased WiiWare and virtual console titles and transfer them to the wii u using the wii system transfer feature but nintendo notes that this functionality will also cease to work in 2019 so get it done sooner Rather than later, Nintendo has said it will provide exact timing on when re-downloads will be disabled in the future. So, just kind of you know, sad to see it go. It's a, a relic of a uh, pastime in gaming. Uh, Nintendo always has a hard time <coughs> with their online infrastructure, with their uh, online economy. So, uh, hopefully, they improve it in the future. Sad to see it go, but it had to happen. Shit yeah, I mean. Old. Sad to see it go in over a year. I mean, they're giving so much time. I didn't realize. I thought they were shutting it down like by the end of the year or something like that. January 31st, 2019. They're giving you all the time in the world to oh, sort your God. shit out and, and do what you got to do. Yeah, that that's kudos to you, Nintendo. Yeah. That, damn, do they plan ahead. <laughs> yep, this is Nintendo for you. Yeah. They know what they're doing. Last bit of news for the day. It's been a lengthy one. Last bit of news. PS Plus October free games are Metal Gear Solid 5 and the Amnesia Collection. Finally, yeah. they get a good game for PS Plus. There's so few and far between. Yeah. Metal Gear Solid 5 is a solid ass game. <laughs> uh, I haven't beaten it yet because the game becomes a jumbled ass mess in the last act. Uh, because everything that went down between Hideo Kojima and Konami, the game is very, very unfinished. Um, but the core gameplay is so fun and so amazing. Did you have a lot of experience with it? No, I've played maybe an hour, two hours tops. I didn't buy the game. <clears throat> I'm going to get it now. Obviously, it's free. It's one of those games that's really hard to learn. Um, but uh, it, once you learn it, it's really complex you know control scheme it gets so fun to play i did i really didn't find it that difficult really i, I actually I did. enjoyed it. it it it's a lot like other metal gear games i it's the way i was playing i was trying to capture some base i'm trying to remember one of the missions i was doing but there was some like big base with a bunch of uh you know enemies and i would just rush them I would just go from hiding place to hiding place, closer and closer, just, just booking them it, off as booking you go, it, or? Picking, picking them off if I could, but just getting to them to where I could melee them. And oh, I see. Yeah, that's that's the easiest way to play Metal Gear Solid. Any of the Metal see, Gear. See, this games. was my first Metal Gear game, so it was 
I didn't know the proper way to play. Hide and rush. Yeah. So I play a lot of different ways, which is this game definitely encourages you to use your imagination. They give you yeah. infinite ways to kill people and attack people. Another another great thing about it. I mean, the fact that you could have so many different strategies to to accomplish the same task. Um, that says a lot about this game. Yeah, once I unlock the rocket fist, it's like a, your whole forearm detaches and it shoots at people and you can control it. It's so rad. That's it's all I use. so with. rad. And it's so Metal Gear. Like, the shit they had in this game. Putting them on balloons and sending them to the fucking island. Yeah. Like, <laughs> who, who comes up with that shit, you know? <laughs> you can equip your dog, um, Diamond Dog, with, like, tasers and, like, knives on its paws and it can run and attack people and tase them. <laughs> And like do backflips off of them, like Lucha Dog. It's such a great game. I need to get back into that shit. Yeah. So yeah, if you have PlayStation Plus, do yourself a huge solid and get Metal Gear Solid Five, the Amnesia Collection too. <laughs> to touch on that really quick, very scary uh, game. Very. Uh, it's not jump out and scare you. It's like visceral, mind fucking type of scaring. So it's a collection. I believe it's three games, maybe. So go get that as well. It's free. Free fifty can't beat that. Is it the game that goes like? Oh my god! <laughs> no, I forget what game that is. <laughs> I wish it was that game. Oh my god, <laughs> Jennifer! <laughs> oh, 